So there's a few things that we need to understand is that gut permeability, which is when your intestines spill proteins, bacteria, and other, uh, we'll say pathogens or antigens into your bloodstream because your blood is all around these intestines, which then moves around your entire body. When you're always spilling these pathogens and antigens from your intestines, they have to be filtered by your liver, which slows down the detox process or gums it up, gunks it up is a good way to put it. And then it is free circulating your blood. Your blood then is going to create more prostaglandins. It's going to create more leukotrienes. It's going to create more um, histamines, more cytokine-based reactions. That creates inflammation. This inflammation, these reactions in certain people, ends up as mucus in the nose, the uh, mucus in the eyes, watery, runny eyes, post-nasal drip, uh, itchiness, hives, etc. So there's a reaction. Now, the reaction, a lot of the times, is stemming from the gut. So that can happen from, uh, the leaky gut can happen from intestinal permeability, uh, of course, right? But it can, the intestinal permeability can happen because of antibiotic use, uh, poor eating, like fried foods, a lot of gluten, a lot of dairy, a lot of inflammatory-based foods. Gluten actually um, begins to open up those, believe it or not, tight junctions between the intestinal walls. Uh, what else? Food sensitivities, so common food sensitivities. I mentioned uh, two, dairy, gluten. For a lot of people, believe it or not, eggs, egg whites are one of them. But again, you have to test your food sensitivities to know. Uh, antibiotics, birth control, tap water that contains chlorine or fluoride, heavy metals, uh, chronic stress. All of these things will begin to open up that gut, that gut wall. And when that happens, well, then normal foods, normal protein amino acid strands can begin to enter your bloodstream. That then can create a cascade event of inflammation. <laughs> 